this lecture is intended uh, as a quick revision for chapter 1, 2, and 3, which have already been covered in class. If you recall, in this chapter, we have started off with continuous time closed loop system examples, and we discuss how Laplace transform is used in analyzing and designing such systems. We then, uh, when discussing discrete time systems and the appropriate tool, which is the Z transform. A typical closed loop system is shown in this figure. Normally, you have an input or the desired input. You have some sort of a controller or a compensator. You have a plant, which is the physical system that you're trying to control. And you have the response of the plant. And remember, our main objective is to make the response of the plant equal to the desired input. To do this, the real status of the response of the plant has to be fed back via a sensor. The difference in the signal is somehow filtered or processed in the compensator. The compensator also called the controller. Sometimes it's also called a digital filter. They are all the same, so the compensator could be a controller, could be a filter. They have the same functionality. The reason we call it sometimes a filter is that the different signal cannot be fed directly to the plant. That's why it has to go through a process, which is sometimes we call it a digital filter. Please keep in mind that the plant block here includes not only the aircraft model, but also the actuator involved. For example, if you are controlling the elevator angle, in this case, then uh, the plant model will be the aircraft model plus the hydraulic actuator which is connected to the elevator. In many cases, if the actuator block is not shown separately, it means it is included inside the plant block. Let's take the example of the electronic stability control system which is fitted in most modern vehicles as a standard. Some car manufacturers, they call it the electronic stability program. Some other, they call it the dynamic stability control and different names, but the same objective, which is to improve stability of your vehicle. Imagine you are driving um, around the corner in wet conditions. You may experience a reduction or even loss in traction in this case, when the ESC detects the loss of steering control, it automatically applies the brakes to help steer your vehicle where the driver intends to go. The braking is automatically applied to the wheels individually. For example, if you have an oversteer case, if you have an oversteer, then the brakes will be applied automatically to the outer front wheel. And if you have an understeer case, the brakes will be automatically applied to the inner um, rear wheel. Remember, some of the electronic stability control modules reduce the engine power until control is regained. If we were to present the electronic stability control in a block diagram format, uh, perhaps we could uh, consider this vehicle as our plant. If we drag it a little bit below, um, starting from the user or desired input, then this will be the steering wheel, if you agree. The steering wheel, uh, normally, for it to be um, in any useful format, uh, there should be somewhere a sensor here, an angle sensor, which will convert the position of the steering wheel into some sort of useful information. Uh, this is then followed by a summing junction, then our controller, which is in this case the electronic stability control. If you recall, the electronic stability control applies the brakes automatically and may reduce the engine power until control of the vehicle is regained. So we're going to present the actuator as a separate block, and that's going to be the braking system and the engine system 
This is then followed by the vector plant and then we get the response. Now the response as expected is measured by an accelerometer, multi-axis accelerometer and your sensors. So this is fed back to the system and the difference between the the driver input and the existing vector of the vector is our error and this is where the controller interferes to apply the braking automatically to the right wheel and reduce the engine power until the control is regained now remember the algorithm of the electronic stability control is programmed in a microcontroller or a digital computer which performs the compensation or the control function within the system. In contrast to a continuous time system whose operation is modeled by a set of differential equations, a discrete time system like the ESC shown here is described by a set of difference equations. There are other presentations for discrete time system which we will be describing next. For example, we can write a discrete system in this form. This is a non-casual system, I would rather keep it as a casual system at the moment. And we call this representation as a difference equation. What does that really mean that the output now equal to the input now plus the output yesterday plus the output two days ago so this system depends on existing and past information and we call these systems casual but the representation here what well, does that really mean that the output now equal to the input now plus the output yesterday plus the output two days ago we can present this in the system function in the z domain and this becomes y of z, x of z. This is delayed by one period. So we present this as i z minus 1 of y of z plus a delay of two periods y of z. Rearranging this, uh, we can get the transfer function as y of z over x of z equals to z squared divided by z squared um, minus that has to be minus minus z and minus 1 now what we call this format or representation this is what we call as a system function a third representation can be obtained by dividing the numerator by the denominator of the z transfer function um, if you do actually the division yourself uh, you will find that the coefficients here A and B and C and all the way, they are in this form. One um, plus one 
So I could do those. It will be in that form. Layer 4. And this is going to be Layer Gaussian 8. And so on. And this is the third representation. And normally uh, we call this is the unit sample response. You can also present um, the above in a fourth representation. For example, if you look at the difference equation, the first one, what you will find is the output equal to the input. So we can present this in a block diagram format. You can just write y equal just for equal to the x of n. So y equal to the x of n plus the reason I put a, a gap here is just to add the summing junction plus y and minus 1 and plus y and minus 2. Now what we can, we have two pluses. We can add a delay for y and another delay So what we will get, here we have y coming in this way, delayed once, so the output here is y and minus 1. Some of it will be added back, and some of it will continue to get delayed again. In this case, the data here is y and minus 2. So if you actually look at this block diagram, it represents the difference equation. So this point here will be x of n plus y n minus 2. And taking another color, the information here is exactly what we had before but with added excuse me plus plus y and minus one oops leave that one and minus 1. So y and minus 1 will be added at the later stage. So if you think about it, then y equals to all of that one, which represents the difference equation. Now all of this is what we call the block diagram representation. So this is what we call the block diagram representation. There's another presentation um, which is uh, very close to the Z transform by replacing um, Z by, um, if we replace Z by 1 over the delay uh, and you substitute back, you get another fifth representation. Now, why do we need to know all of this? Um, in reality, there is no single representation uh, that we'll be using. The reason for this, each representation has its strength and weaknesses.